So I was looking at a military report last night. I'm on a watch list. And they found that when a bird impacts the fuselage of an airplane at a certain velocity, cruising speed, the bird no longer acts like a solid. It acts like a, like a liquid. Liquid bird, that has nothing to do with anything. But now you know. Hello and welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the show where we extend the conversation on the show that has the most lightsaber content of all shows. I think we can prove that. Rebels, though? It's over an... Okay, fine, yes, yeah, Star Wars Rebels has more lightsabers in it. On this show, we like to take a look at the previous week's Because Science episode and see your comments, your questions, what I got right, what I got wrong, what can add to our knowledge so that you and I can move forward hand in hand into the future of geekery. But not, not hand in hand though. I don't like, I don't like touching. On the last episode of Because Science, it was all about this right here. <laughs> it was, what toxin is on Poison Ivy's lips? I came to the conclusion that because the poison has to be plant-based and because it needs to kill quickly, it doesn't have to be nearly as potent as some of the most potent poisons known to science, like botulinum toxin or batrachotoxin. Instead, it could be something like cyanide, which could be produced at her lips and then go into some dude with a smooch and then kill him very, very rapidly. But what did you have to say? Oh, botulinum is also where Botox comes from. It's just one form. And it paralyzes stuff. Do I look surprised? We're in LA. Our first question comes from Sebastian Maestri, who says, sorry about your name, uh, who says, so I have a proposition. What if instead of the poisonous substance does not come from some sort of lipstick that she applies, what if it comes from her pores and then gets transferred into the pores of the person that she kisses? I think I pretty much said this, but you added some needed context. What if it also came through uh, if, if the exposure to whatever toxin poison ivy has is not just through ingestion of kissy stuff. It, it could also come on her breath through inhalation and that's one of the most common ways that you get poisoned. It's either through direct contact and ingestion like it would happen on your lips or it is through inhalation. And inhalation is so dangerous for poisons because it goes directly onto the lining of your lungs and then directly into your bloodstream and that's dangerous. So if poison ivy was also, you know, think about it. What if it was, what if it was like she, dr it was like the equivalent of having like booze breath and she drank the poison beforehand and just, come kiss me big boy and he kind of inhaled it as he did that. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, I love the show, keep it up. Now I gotta go rush to my lab. <laughs> LOL, darn it, I did it again. You did what? Mention the fact that you work in a lab? Nope, they told me not to be salty. Hey, nice, you're doing science, good for you. Our second comment comes from William Dolino on the Because Science Facebook page where I'm also taking comments and questions. And he says, great job as usual. That's not what he says. And he says, great episode as usual, Kyle. Keep it up. My 10 year old daughter is a big fan. When she first saw your show with me, she said she didn't know Thor was so smart. Hope you could do a little greeting for her. Her name is Lara. Thank you. Hey, Lara. Thank you so much for watching the show. I know you're young now, but you are exactly the kind of person that we want interested in science and technology and engineering and the arts and math. We need little girls just like you to grow up and make the world a better place. And I think you can do that if you have an interest in science at all. If you wanna pursue it, I absolutely believe that you can do it. Thanks for watching. I mean, the episode's not over but you can stop watching now, Laura, because you won this episode. The next comment comes from Peyton Hislop, who says, Kype acts and makes jokes that should be cringy, but aren't. Stuff gets cringy sometimes. It's because you gotta be silly. It's because people 
like Laura are watching, or 10 year olds who also need to get interested. It's not just people who call me Kype. My name's not Kype. There's a lot of misspelling in the comments this week. A lot of it. Sexy is not spelled S-C-E-X. Sexy. I like it better. That's not what they meant. They were just getting it wrong. Our next comment comes from Sarah Vitrup, who says, there are poisonous birds. RIP headphone users. Yes, in fact, uh, what I was talking about in the Poison Ivy episode uh, with Batrachotoxin that's in some birds and beetles, uh, the bird is named the hooded pitohui. Yes, and it was actually the first documented poisonous bird. It has Batrachotoxin in its feathers and in its body, and if you were to consume it, don't, don't do it. But there are poisonous birds. Just goes to show you. Don't randomly eat things. Next comment comes from what the science? <laughs> Sounds an awful lot like this show, doesn't it? Cyanide fact, what makes cyanide deadly is its affinity towards hemoglobin, and that's what carries oxygen to all parts of the body, especially the powerhouses of the cell, mitochondria. And it replaces oxygen from bonding with hemoglobin and makes cells deprived of oxygen. That is an interesting cyanide fact. It's half wrong, but it's still interesting. So cyanide does bond very strongly with hemoglobin and it goes into uh, red blood cells, but after it goes into red blood cells, that is deposited into the body's tissues where cyanide actually bonds with an enzyme that allows the cells to use oxygen. So it's not displacing oxygen from hemoglobin, it is preventing cells from using oxygen in the first place, which leads to dead times. And you don't want that. It's called histotoxic hypoxia. Anything that sounds like that, you don't want. Our last comment comes from Kabuki Ruiz, who says, so what kind of poison Cersei Lannister and Elia Martel... Elia? I didn't watch it. The Martell lady used no cyanide, right? <laughs> Actually, I will show you this video here. Uh, for the American Chemical Society that a one Dr. Rachelle Burks did where she explains she thinks the famous strangler poison in Game of Thrones is closer to strychnine than anything else. And it's plant-based, so poison ivy might have access to it. Dr. Burks here actually helped me out a little bit with this episode, so go watch her episode here and uh, make the science go round. Bit of a stacked field this week. Who had the best comment this week? Uh, gonna have to give it to you, Lara. You're the future. It can't be me. I'm doing this. It's too late for me to change the world, but it's not too late for you to do so. And I believe in you with all of this. It's closer to here, the heart. And also what thinks, the brain. <laughs> You're a super nerd. Hey, but of course, I'm not always right. I'm really not. So tell me what I got wrong about the Poison Ivy episode. First correction comes from Major Moron, not a great start, who says, first of all, the average human body weighs 62 kilograms. Thanks for making me feel fat. It's an average. Sorry. <laughs> Second of all, six kilograms equals 14 pounds. Uh, if one pound is half a kilogram, how does six kilograms equals 12 pounds? Exclamation point, or nah? Okay, yes. One kilogram is equal to 2.205 pounds. If you multiply 62 kilograms, as I did in the episode, times 90 grams per kilogram, you get 5.58 kilograms, not six, which equals 12.3 pounds, not 14, like I said in the episode. I round it up. I use sig figs, like they told me in engineering school and they screwed me again. Yes, you're technically correct. Congratu- not, try not to be salty. You got me. Good job. Next correction comes from Sheol IK, who says, uh, that's cool and all, but we should address a bigger issue here, her name. Poison Ivy should be called Venomous Ivy since she's the one poisoning you with a kiss. So close. You were almost 
Oh, this comment was so awesome because I love the distinction between poisonous and venomous. So if an animal is poisonous, if you were to come into contact with it or in, ingest some of its flesh, like a poison arrow frog's flesh, then you would get poisoned. But something that is venomous envenomates things. And those are only through things like needles, if a human was doing it, or fangs or stingers. So what is poison ivy doing? You are coming into contact with her skin, ingesting whatever is there, and then becoming poisoned. So poison ivy is technically poisonous. So close. Good comment, though. I mean, it's not really a correction, is it? God, I, I, it's hard for me not to be salty. Weird. I'm not naturally salty. I am. Salt's in your body. I do have, I, I, yep. Our next correction comes from Dylan Schaefer, who says, a cyanide could be produced by her saliva glats. I didn't know she had those in her body. I'm gonna assume you meant glands. This is actually a really cool point. I'll put it in the show notes. It's a blog post on the origin of venom by who I consider, uh, who I consider to be the best science writer alive right now, Carl Zimmer, and he writes at National Geographic, is on the origin of venom. And basically scientists think that venom, or poison, something that could be secreted by a gland, say in a snake, evolved from other proteins used for other functions in the body. So let's say digestive enzymes, like you would find in your salivary glands. At some point in the snake's evolution, there was some copying, some mutations, some DNA anomaly that happened that allowed those enzymes to be used in a different way. Maybe they made their way toward, more towards the teeth and then they were able to make it into the tissue of the things that the snake bit. If over millions of years this gave the snake a selective advantage, generations who also had this property and refined this property would do better. And so we think that venom started out as something like a digestive enzyme in the mouth or in another part of the body that made its way to the mouth and became venom. So could poison ivy be secreting some sort of toxin from some kind of glad? Yes, I think that's absolutely possible if she's mutated. She'd have to be to have glads, wouldn't she? <laughs> Our last comment comes from Joel Wheatman who says, in cases where Ivy's poison is a result of mutation, rubber lips could possibly help if she developed stinging cells on her lips, such as those found in stinging nettles, as the way of administering that poison. That's a great point. So my theory was that some form of cyanide could be secreted uh, through the pores of her lips and just kind of be on it like a nice gloss, like a nice shiny gloss. But it doesn't have to be the only way. Um, stinging nettles, have cells on the outside of their body that are green and look like this, and they just look like barbs, and they're filled with formic acid, the same acid that ants sting you with. And when you touch a stinging nettle, it pierces your skin, you get formic acid in it, and it hurts quite a bit. If poison ivy had the same kind of morphology that a stinging nettle did, except the poison wasn't formic acid, it was something a bit more potent, then I think it could produce the same effects. Good correction. Addition? I don't know how to title these. A lot of corrections this week, but I think the best correction goes to Major Moron. You should change it to Major Smart Boy now because you're right. I rounded and the numbers on screen didn't match the math that you did. Thank you for keeping me honest. I'm glad someone actually checks the math because it can't just be me. I'm dumb. <laughs> you are a super nerd. TM. Now, if you are subscribed to Alpha, you already know what the episode for next week will be because you've already seen it because you got it two days earlier than anyone else. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha for premium content, then next week's episode is also about vibranium. Yes, we're going back. Black Panther was such a cool movie and such a big movie in so many ways that we're tackling vibranium once more. What would happen if a vibranium meteor fell to Earth? So in the comics and the new film, a vibranium meteor is what brings 
all the vibranium on Earth to Wakanda. But if vibranium can absorb kinetic energy, what would happen if it impacted in a meteorite? This one was really hard, and I'm... Vibranium has almost broken me. Do you know why it's so difficult? It takes two things that are intrinsic to motion, kinetic energy and momentum, and it just removes one. It's like saying, what if water was dry, though? I don't know. Stop asking me that. Oh, it's too late now. Anyway, we're going back to Wakanda for more vibranium science. Stay tuned. So go watch the latest episode about Poison Ivy if you haven't yet, and leave me your comments, questions, and corrections at the Because Science handles on Instagram and Twitter and on the Facebook and YouTube pages. And if I have designated you a super nerd, I'm keeping a list, don't try to trick me, put it in the comments when you leave them. I will be looking for you because you get nerdy and I want more people to do that. Maybe it will incentivize everyone else to get as nerdy as possible, to inspire other people to do the same. People like Lara. And don't forget, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And leopard seals. Have you ever seen a leopard seal? No. Turn your safe search on and then search for a picture of one. They would probably leave you alone because they eat penguins. They're so cute. What are you talking about? Look at the teeth on those things. It's like a little pup. It's like a dog. It's like, it's like a dog. Because if, if you turn safe search off, you will see leopard seals literally decapitating penguins. Yeah. Oh, that's. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the screams of truth. But look, he's so happy. There's a good one where its head is coming off and you see all of its guts following. It's like an action yeah. shot. Oh, I saw that. Oh, yep, just saw that one. Look, I'm afraid of three things in the ocean. Great white sharks, orcas, leopard seals, in that order. Oh, he's so goofy. So goofy. I might be more afraid of orcas. They're very smart. Yes, but look at the next photo where he is decapitating a bird. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye.